It's time now for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Anison and Kalinos present Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons. One of the most famous characters of American fiction and one of radio's most thrilling dramas. Tonight and every Thursday at the same time, the famous old investigator takes from his file and brings to us one of his most celebrated missing persons cases. Tonight's case is entitled, The Silver Dagger Murder Case. When you think of a headache, think of Anison. When you have a headache, get Anison. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, it contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients. It gives incredibly fast, effective relief from the pain of headaches, neuritis, or neuralgia. Millions have turned to Anison tablets for this reason. If you're one of those who have not already been given Anison by your own physician or dentist, let me urge you to try it. Results will surprise you. For most effective relief, use only as directed. I'll repeat the name, Anison. A-N-A-C-I-N. All drug counters have it. Now for Mr. Keene and the Silver Dagger murder case. Our scene opens in a three-story, privately owned white stone house in metropolitan New York. On the first floor, in a handsomely furnished study, decorated with curios from many parts of the world, a beautiful woman sits at her desk, deeply engrossed in writing a letter, unaware that death is lurking just outside her door. And this is to tell you that we must not see each other again. Apparently, you misjudged my motives and made a grave mistake. I am not in love with you... And I never was. Good luck. And the best of everything. Edna. Who's there? Who? What are you doing here in my apartment? I thought I made it plain that you were not to see me again. How dare you touch my things? Leave that dagger on the wall. Did you hear what I said? What are you doing with that dagger? No! No, don't! Ah! You... You... Uh, uh. Uh, sorry to disturb you, Mr. Keene. Oh, that's quite all right, Mike. Well, there's a strange-looking fellow in the outer office. He wants to see you. A strange-looking man? And he's got a French accent, but he's he's wearing an outfit like a moving picture extra. Says his name is Lafarge, and it's a matter of life and death. Hmm. Well, I'll see him at once, Mike. Right, sir. And wait till you get a look at his makeup, boss. Sure, all he needs is a camel, and he'd be set for a trip across the desert. You wanted to see me? You are Monsieur King? Yes. My name is Lafarge, Monsieur Jean Lafarge. I am grateful that you can send to see me, Monsieur King. The the uh, situation cannot wait. Please sit down, Mr. Lafarge. You've met my partner, Mike Clancy. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, can I ask you one question, Mister, before you tell the boss what's on your mind? But naturally, Monsieur Clancy. Where did you get that outfit? I am a North African, monsieur. My home is in uh, French Morocco. Part of this costume is Arabian. Oh. You don't mind my saying so, Mr. Lafarge. You don't look Arabian to me. I am French, Monsieur Keene. My parents left France and moved to North Africa to Casablanca when I was a child. What was it you wanted to see me about, Mr. Lafarge? Murder, monsieur. Saints preserve us. What's going on? Last night, a woman named Edna Corrine was killed in a home here in New York. Edna Coring. Seems to me I've heard that name before. She was a very wealthy and beautiful woman, Monsieur Keene. Much in the news. Well, I didn't read about a murder in the papers this morning. It was kept from the papers, Monsieur Clancy. The police believe they will have a better chance to catch the killer 
if there is no publicity at the moment. Then how did you learn about it, Mr. Lafarge? I had an appointment with Edna, Miss Corrine, last night. When I reached the house, the police were there investigating her murder. The man who found her body, a servant, told me what happened. And you spoke to the police? No, monsieur, I did not. I left immediately without going upstairs. I see. But please, let me explain everything first. Very well, Mr. Lafarge. I, uh... I first met Miss Corrine in North Africa three years ago. She was on a tour, and she came to my place of business. I am an exporter of African curios, Monsieur Kin, and she was fond of collecting odd souvenirs on her travels. What sort of odd souvenirs? Oh, masks, silverware, and knives. It, uh, it was a solid silver knife that I sold her, a dagger. It was used by her murderer. And is that why you were so reluctant to speak to the police? Because you had sold her the murder weapon? That and uh, my relationship with Edna Corrine. We were very good friends. And nothing more. But the police may think... Mr. Keene, it is not for myself alone that I beg for your assistance. Edna Corrine was a wonderful woman. It is only fitting that I should ask you one of the greatest investigators in the country, to see that her murderer is caught. It seems to me, Mr. Lafarge, that your story isn't complete. Monsieur? Are you holding anything back from me? You are a very discerning man, Monsieur Keene. Yes, there is something else. I only hesitate because I don't want to involve a young man who may be innocent. Who is this young man? His name is Alan Cody. He is a young, ambitious playwright who is still unknown. I have every reason to believe that Edna Corrine was in love with him. She told me about young Cody. You also have reason to believe Alan Cody may have murdered her? She told me several days before her death that she was breaking off with him. She said that she intended to send him a letter, but I could see it was making her nervous. She wasn't quite sure how he would um, react. Why was Edna Coring breaking off with this young man? She said there was too much of a difference in their ages, at least 14 years. Perhaps there was another reason, I do not know. However, if I may suggest it, young Cody would be the man to question first about her murder. Yes, obviously. Here is my card, Monsieur Keen. I will write young Cody's address on the back for you. Very well. You have no idea how grateful I am for your help. This, this horrible thing has become a nightmare. But now I feel safe. You're safe, Mr. Lafarge, as long as you remain on the list of innocent people. I beg your pardon? If I accept this case, I intend to make a thorough investigation of everyone connected with it, Mr. Lafarge, including you. I understand that, Monsieur Keen. Very well. Mike Clancy and I will have a talk with Alan Cody. Perhaps he'll prove to be a starting point in our search for Edna Coring's murderer. Yes? We're looking for Alan Cody. Does he live here? Why do you want to see him? I'll explain when I meet Mr. Cody. Who is it, Juliet? Someone to see Alan. Someone else? May I ask who you gentlemen are? Uh, my name is Juliet Forsythe, and this is Mrs. Cody, Alan's mother. My name is Keen. My partner, Mike Clancy, and Keen. I... I knew it. Something awful has happened to Alan, Mrs. Cody. Mr. Keene's a private investigator. Calm yourself, Juliet. I trust my boy implicitly. I knew those other men who came here this morning were policemen, even though they weren't in uniform. And now, Mr. Keen... Mrs. Cody... Has someone questioned you about your son, Alan? Yes, Mr. Keene. They were looking for him. They didn't tell me why, but they acted like plainclothes police. They probably were. You see, your son is involved in a murder case. No! Juliet, please leave me alone with these gentlemen. I'll phone you at your flat later on. Very well, Mrs. Cody. I'll expect to hear from you. Miss Forsyth and your son are friends, Mrs. Cody? Yes, Mr. Keene. Juliet and Alan have been friends since childhood. She's a wonderful girl, and my son is a good boy, no matter what they think he may be involved in. Where is he now, ma'am? 
I don't know, Mr. Clancy. And if I did, I wouldn't tell you until you've explained what Alan has to do with all this. A woman named Edna Coring was stabbed to death in her apartment last night. Edna Coring? You knew her, Mrs. Cody? Yes, and so did Alan. That's why we want to question But him. if you think my son had anything to do with it, Mr. Keene... I understand your son was in love with a murdered woman. That's not true. Then what was his relationship with her? Well, it was purely business. He's just finished writing a play, and Edna Coring was interested in helping him get it produced. She had money and... I know that. However, my information links your son with Mr. Coring in more than a business way. Then your information is wrong, Mr. Keene. Mrs. Cody... Please don't think I've come here believing your son had a part in Miss Coring's death. All I'm looking for are facts. And I thought he might be able to help me. I haven't seen Alan in three days, Mr. Keene. Hmm. Does he live here with you? Most of the time, but he also has a small studio where he often works when he wants privacy. Where is that studio, Mrs. Cody? I don't know. You mean you won't tell me? Mr. Keene, Alan is my boy. He's all I had left in the world after his father died. I'd sooner die myself than do anything to hurt him. I respect your feelings as a mother, Mr. Cody. I don't blame you. But if I could only convince you that we're here to help him if he's innocent, perhaps you'll cooperate. I... I don't want to be rude, but I've said all I'm going to say. Very well, Mrs. Cody. Let's go, Mike. Mr. Keene. Yes? I swear to you, my son is innocent. For your sake, Mrs. Cody, I hope I can prove it. But my mission is to find Edna Coring's killer. And when I do, I don't intend to spare him the penalty that all murderers must pay for their crimes. Well, this is Edna Coring's house, Mr. Keene. <laughs> She evidently owned this entire Whitestone building. Well, perhaps there's someone inside. And no one seems to be in, boss. I beg your pardon. Are you looking for someone? Oh, do you happen to know if anyone is home in Miss Coring's residence? Are you friends of hers? My name is Keene. My partner and I are private investigators. Oh, yes. I'm Anson Howe, Edna's husband. Her husband? I didn't know she was married. Edna and I were secretly married one week ago in Chicago. I've just come from police headquarters, Mr. Keene. I was told that you two were investigating Edna's murder. Please come inside. I, I have a key to the house. I only found out about Edna this morning when I arrived from Chicago. I'm... Not able to control my emotions completely as yet, so please forgive me. I understand, Mr. Howe. But perhaps you can tell me... Uh... Boss, what was that? Something hit the floor in that room. There must be a prowler in the house. Keep your gun handy, Mike, and let's investigate. Right, boss. I'll open the door. Fast. Whoa. Stand where you are, young fella. Don't make a move. Who are you? I... I just came to see Edna Coring. Is I... your name Alan Cody? Yes. I thought so. How did you get in here? The door was open. It happened to be locked when we came in. Sure, and he climbed through that open window, boss. Well, all right. But I haven't taken anything. Except my own property. You mean that manuscript under your arm? If you'll let me pass, please. Just a moment, Alan. Let me see that manuscript. It's mine. I gave it to Edna to read, and I've taken it back. The boss asked for the script, young fella, so just be polite and hand it over. Give that back to me. Now, take it easy. Here it is, Mr. Keeper. Alan, your play has an interesting title. Has it? The Dagger. It's a mystery melodrama. So I gathered. Sit down, Alan. What are you going to do, Mr. Keene? I'm going to read your play from cover to cover. It might prove to be as interesting as its title. The Dagger. Edna Coring, you remember, was stabbed to death with a silver dagger. In just a moment, we'll return to Mr. Keene and the Silver Dagger murder case. Meanwhile, beware of unpleasing breath that breathes between the teeth. 
Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Those cracks and crevices where food particles can decay must be reached to have a really clean mouth, a welcome breath. Your dentist knows this to be true. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Kalanos gives amazing dental floss action. That is, sends thousands of active cleansing bubbles to penetrate hard-to-reach dental areas. Helps dislodge bits of food that can cause unpleasing breath and tooth decay. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Kalanos has high polishing action, too. Brightens dingy teeth by removing ordinary yellow surface stains. Kalanos is gentle, safe even for children's teeth and tender gums. Enjoy its cool, clean, minty flavor. Kalanos is dentist recommended. Cleans your teeth bright, keeps your breath right. Use Kalanos toothpaste with dental floss action. Get Kalanos with dental floss action today. Now back to Mr. Keene and the Silver Dagger murder case. The murder of beautiful, wealthy Edna Coring brings Mr. Keene, the famous investigator, and his partner Mike Clancy to the scene of the crime. Miss Coring's New York residence. There, Mr. Keene discovers that the victim had been secretly married to a man named Anson Howe and had apparently also had a close relationship with Alan Cody, a young playwright. Mr. Keene has surprised young Cody in the study, attempting to get hold of a copy of his latest play, which the murdered woman had had in her possession. Now, as Mr. Keene reads the manuscript of the play, which is titled The Dagger... When did you finish this play, Alan? Four weeks ago, Mr. Keene. Have you read it, Mr. Howe? Yes. My wife showed it to me. Edna said she was interested in producing it to help this young man, Alan Cody. I'd never met him, but I know who he is. You mean you were married to Edna Corey? Yes. Mr. Howe and Edna were secretly married last week, Alan. By the way, Mr. Howe, why did you and your wife keep your marriage a secret? We only kept it a secret so there wouldn't be too much newspaper publicity, Mr. Keene. And I thought she loved me. Edna told me all about you. She said she befriended you because she thought you were talented, but that you became infatuated with her. Apparently that's the theme of this play of Alan. A young man falls in love with an older woman and stabs her to death. Uh, Mr. Keene. Yes, Mike? Will you just look at the walls of this room? I noticed them before, Mike. Edna Coring had some odd souvenirs. My wife collected these masks and weapons as a hobby, Mr. Keene. The silver dagger that was used to kill her was taken from the empty space on that wall over there. Hmm. Mr. Howe, do you know a man named Lafarge? Jean Lafarge, the French Moroccan? Yes, he was also in love with my wife before I married her. But he was a sensible man, Mr. Keene. Alan Cody here was different. What do you mean? I mean that I think you had something to do with my wife's murder. You have anything to offer as proof, Mr. Howe? You've just read his play, haven't you, Mr. Keene? Yes, but that's not proof of murder. It might have been a coincidence. The money he filched from my wife was no coincidence. Why, you lying... Just stay put, young fellow. What money are you referring to, Mr. Howe? Edna gave Alan Cody $15,000. You'll find three cancelled checks in her bank statements for 5000 each, endorsed by Alan Cody. I don't know a thing about that money. Mike, look through that desk and see if you can find those bank statements. Oh, I'll find them for you. They're right here in this drawer. You'll find them in this bundle of checks, Mr. Keene. For all I know, Cody tried to squeeze more money out of Edna. She refused, so he killed her. And if it's the last thing I do, I'll make certain he pays for it. Alan, Mr. Howe is telling the truth. Here are those checks, totaling $15,000 and endorsed by you. But, but that isn't my handwriting, Mr. Keene. It's a forgery. Write your name on this sheet of paper, quickly. Write my name? Yes, here's a pen. There you are, Mr. Keene. Hmm. Look at this, Mike. Well, sure, and his handwriting isn't the same as on those checks, boss, but maybe he's disguising his signature on purpose. Well, isn't anyone on my side? Do you all think I'm guilty? Even your mother knew how you felt about Edna. She came here once and quarreled with Edna, threatened her if Edna didn't break off with you. Leave my mother out of this. I'm sorry, Alan, we can't. In view of what Mr. Howe just said about threats... Please phone your mother now. Look, Mr. Keene, arrest me if you want to, but leave her alone. I've caused her enough unhappiness already. Alan, will you phone your mother or must I? All right. I'll do it. Hello? 
Juliet? Yes. Is this Alan? Yes. Let me speak to Mother, please. She's ill, Alan. She's in bed. The doctor just left. What's the matter with her? The strain was too much for her. Worrying about you. You'd better come home right away. I'll be right over. Mr. Keene, my mother's been taken ill. I've got to see her. Please give me a break. I won't try to run away. You'll find me there with my mother when you want me. On my word of honor. Your word of honor isn't enough in this case, Cody. Keep out of this, Howe. I think we can trust him, Mr. Howe. Go on, Alan. But don't leave your mother's flat until you hear from me. Thank you, Mr. Keene. How could you let him go, Mr. Keene? Suppose he... Alan Cody didn't murder your wife, Mr. Howe. At least he never endorsed these checks that were made out to him. Tell me, did your wife make these out herself? Is this her handwriting? Yes, of course. She told me she'd sent money to Alan to help him produce his play. And did she tell you that she sent these checks to him directly? Why, no, I just took that for granted. When we're dealing with murder, Mr. Howe, we take nothing for granted. Suppose we all follow young Cody to his mother's house. I have an idea that the solution to your wife's murder is there. Mr. Keene, please come in. Thank you. Juliet, you know my partner, Mike Clancy, and this is Mr. Howe, Miss Juliet Forsythe. How do you do? How do you do? How is Mrs. Cody? A little better. May we see her? Of course. She's in the bedroom with Alan. Please come with me. Mike, let me have that statement I made out before we left Edna Coring's study. Uh, here it is, boss. I still don't understand why you typed that thing out, Mr. Keene. You have complete authority to investigate the case. You don't need a statement to that effect from anyone. I prefer it this way, Mr. Howe, for my own reasons. Please come in, Mr. Keene. Mr. Keene. How do you feel, Mrs. Cody? A little better, thank you. The doctor said Mother would be all right, providing she wasn't subject to any more strain. It's her heart. Mrs. Cody, I'm convinced now that your son is innocent of Edna Coring's murder, and I'm going to prove it. Oh, Mr. Keene... Do you really mean that? The boss never meant anything more in his life, ma'am. Incidentally, this is Mr. Howe. He's married to Edna Coring. <gasps> married? Then I was right about her. After all, she was shameless. Take it easy, Mother. I'm all right, son. I just want you to know that when I interfered in your behalf, I knew what I was doing. Then you saw Edna Coring, Mrs. Cody. Uh, Mr. Keene, I knew she was only amusing herself with Alan... I saw her and warned her never to speak to him again or I wouldn't be responsible. Mother, be careful of what you say. I'm not afraid. I have nothing to hide. Perhaps not. But you made one mistake, Mrs. Cody. Edna Coring was only trying to be fair to Alan. She never led him on. Is that right, Alan? Yes. But if you think my mother's quarrel with Edna had anything to do with her murder... Alan, right now all I want is complete authority to investigate this case thoroughly. But you already have that, Mr. Keene. I need it in writing, Mrs. Cody. I've prepared a statement to that effect, and Mr. Howe has already signed it. I want the rest of you to add your names. Mike, your pen, please. Okay, boss. Here, here you are. Uh, Miss Cody, sign here, please. There you are. Alan? There. Well, I guess that's all we... Oh, wait. Uh, suppose you sign it, too, Juliet. After all, you're involved in this, too, as Alan's best friend. I'd be glad to sign, Mr. Keene. There you are, sir. Oh, thank you, Juliet. Now I don't want to cause Mrs. Cody any more distress, so I'll leave you for the time being. May I stay here with Mother and Mr. Keene? Yes, Alan. It's quite all right. Oh, uh, Mr. Howe. May I speak to you in the living room before I leave, please? Very well. And you too, Juliet? Excuse me, Mrs. Cody. I'll be right back. What is it, Mr. Keene? Mr. Howe, I wanted to tell you that I found your wife's murderer. What? But I prefer to finish this case out here so as not to excite Mrs. Cody. Mr. Keene, you mean you know who killed Edna Coring? Yes. Who? You did, Juliet. What? Don't try to deny it. A moment ago, when you signed this statement I pretended to need, I saw that your signature matched the endorsements on these checks of Edna Coring's. You write with your left hand, Juliet. 
which gives your handwriting a peculiar slant. But, Mr. Keene, how did this girl get hold of those checks for my wife? Your wife believed Juliet Forsyth could be trusted as Alan's best friend. She wanted to help him produce his play, but thought perhaps he wouldn't accept her money after she broke off with him, and that Juliet could persuade him. But Juliet promptly forged Alan's signature and cashed the checks herself. No, that's a lie. Now listen, young lady, you raise a rumpus and scare that old lady inside, and I'll carry you out my back. Edna Coring took Alan away from me. All my life I hoped he'd marry me, but he... He never knew. And Edna Coring stole him away. Are you trying to say that you killed Edna Coring because of your love for Alan? Don't you see, Mr. Keene? I wanted to protect him from her. I admit I was terribly jealous, but I, I thought of him as well. In other words, Juliet, you're looking for sympathy. Well, I'm going to disappoint you. There is no excuse for murder and no sympathy for it. Even less in your case. How can you say that? Look at me. Am I pretty... Am I rich and beautiful like Edna was? No. All I had was Alan and she... You claim you loved Alan. Yet you stole money that was rightfully his. Love such as yours is false, Juliet. You stabbed Edna Coring to death to cover your theft and forgery. No! No! Maybe jealousy had a part in it, too. <laughs> Maybe your mind did become twisted over the years. But the fact remains that you murdered primarily for profit. That's how you'll be tried. Take her away, Mike. I'll put in a call to Lieutenant Hale at police headquarters and tell him that the Silver Dagger murder case is finally solved. And so Mr. Keene finds the solution to the Silver Dagger murder case. The next time you're suffering from the pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, try Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven, active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way have discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pain of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So next time such pain strike, take Anison. For most effective relief, use only as directed. Your druggist has Anison in handy boxes of 12 and 30, and economical family size bottles of 50 and 100. The name is Anison, A-N-A-C-I-N. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, is based on the novel Mr. Keene. The radio sequel is originated and produced by Frank and Ann Hummer. Dialogue by Lawrence Clee. Bennett Kilpack plays Mr. Keene. It is on the air every Thursday at this time. Don't miss Mr. Keene next Thursday when the kindly old Tracer turns to the Martin Street murder case. Ever suffer heartburn from acid indigestion? New Bicidol Mints, medically proven, quickly rid stomach of that blown-up feeling anywhere, anytime. Bicidol Mints give longer-lasting relief than baking soda, help prevent immediate return of the trouble, soothe irritated stomach lining, let you sleep when indigestion strikes at night. Carry new Bicidol Mints for fast relief. And always have Bicidol powder in your home. Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, will be on the air next Thursday at this same time. This is Larry Elliott saying goodbye for Mr. Keene and the Whitehall Pharmacal Company, makers of Anison and Kalinos, and many other dependable, high-quality drug products. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>